Hi everyone. Um, I have someone pretty special with me here tonight, uh, Tracy. Now Tracy's been a victim of um, family and domestic violence and um, you know hopefully we're here to tell her story this evening in the hope that if you're out there living this hell every day you know it's okay to do something about it. You do not have to be in this position. You know have a listen to the story and you know hopefully it'll um, prompt someone to go and get a little bit of help. So Tracy, now where do we start? Okay, how old are you Tracy? 44. 44? Yes. And how many children have you got? Five. Five children, 44 years of age. Yes. That's a pretty good effort. You know, that's a pretty damn effort. So, alright, so when did this all start for you? Like, you know, how old were you? How many children did you have? Like, I was in two violent relationships, mm -hmm. um, so my older children, I was with their father for a while and left that relationship. I then entered another relationship, one just previously, which was domestic violence for 15 years. Um, basically just started off with the controlling, then it got into the abuse side, alcohol was involved on his behalf. Before you knew it, I was fully involved in it. And, you know, I know people ask the same question. Did you not think that it was wrong or did you, did, was it easier to stay because you had children or? It sometimes just becomes a way of life, you know. Um, it's the only way I knew how to cope with things and you start to believe that you're not worthy. You start to believe the things that they say. Um, in my case, it's only started off gradually, then it got intense, um, where it became involved with my older children who got hurt by this man, um, to the point where I was just exhausted and just felt it was a normal way of life. I wasn't brought up in domestic violence around drinking, so it was all new to me. And, like, you're not a drinker yourself and you're not into drugs or anything like that, so... I don't I don't touch drugs, no. When I was into the depths of the relationship, the only way I did know how to survive at one stage was to have a few drinks. Um, was that your like coping mechanism? Yeah, and then I was sort of had OCD with cleaning and just put a lot of it out, blanked a lot of it out. So did you get any help, like psychological help? Did you see a psychologist? Did you go and talk to your doctor? Um, at the time, I tried to, but... I don't think I was ready. I think I was in denial. Um, I don't think it really helped me at that time. It wasn't until I had to go to a refuge. Um, then I've left that refuge, come to another one where I've just isolated myself from everybody. It's really hard because you start to... There's a lot of damage for me, not just only for me, but for my children. I've watched my children suffer through so much. Um, I've seen my son at his lowest, you know, where I've walked in and seen him try to kill himself, you know. And how old is he? Or how He's old was he? He was 17. He's 18 now. So at 17 he tried to commit suicide? My oldest daughter's got a few things happening which I just can't really discuss at the moment, but you have your days where you're strong um, and you fight for every bit of just hope. I guess for me at the moment is not having the family for whatever reason um, and just the self-blame, you know, self-blame is a horrible feeling, you know, and no one should have to feel that. So you haven't got any family, any immediate family, mother, father? anyone like that in your life right now? Not at the moment, no. Is that because you've chosen to do that to deal with what you're dealing with or is that... I think a lot of it is they don't really understand what I'm going through at the moment um, and it's easier just to not have them in my life at the present moment due to me not wanting to be a failure, I guess. Um, and is that how you feel? You think you've been That's a failure? That's how I feel, yes. 
Oh, you shouldn't feel like that, darling. Yeah, I do. Um, I feel for each and every one of my children. The children are so innocent, they shouldn't have to be subjected to any of this. And unfortunately, I subjected mine to it, not knowing the damages. Were um, you unaware of what was going on in the background while all this was happening with you? Were you unaware that... Um, I wasn't really aware of the damage that it was causing my mm. children. I, I guess I was just so caught up in my own emotions that, you know, um, I did what I could do at the time to be there for my kids. Um, did they come and tell you what was happening in their lives, like, and how they felt? They did, but my ex made it really hard for my other children. Um, my eldest son caused a bit of grief for him. Um, I think he was just built up with emotions and he'd done some damage to the property. Um, they've all suffered. Mm. Yeah. And so your youngest now, you don't have to mention names, but your youngest. Um, He's um, very um, affected by it, as well as my other younger daughter. Um, she's got a lot of psychological issues going on. And as a single parent, you can only do what you can do. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just recommend that anyone that is going through this just to stay strong and stay focused. And it's not easy. You have your days where you don't want to keep going. Um, yeah, it's just hard. You've done really well. You've done really well. Hey, you've done so well to do what you did. You know, and just to recognise that it's not a good thing. It's not the right thing that happens, you know. It's not a normal way of living. And you don't have to live like that and to make the changes. You know, you're a good, strong woman to do that. And that takes guts. You know, that takes just old-fashioned guts to get up and go and do it and make a change. Because so easily... You know, so easily. Yeah, you, you, when you do leave, you get through that stage where, how am I going to do it? You know, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Well, how did you do that? I mean, I know so obviously I was pretty desperate. Mm -hmm. um, and I've decided to go to a refuge. Um, so how did you find out about a refuge? And obviously we can't mention, yep, so you I've know, anything about So I've just gone to a few places. Um, did like you go to organisations Life, yeah. or...? Yeah, Lifeline. So know, Lifeline, yeah. Um, Rang Lifeline? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just... What I'm trying to do that, you know, there is going to be someone out there now watching and they're going to be living through that hell, like I said before. And, you know, let's just guide them on what you did to make a difference, to make a change. Yeah. So you rang Lifeline? Yeah. So, you know, ring Lifeline, have a talk to someone about it. You know, they will then... And don't be scared because don't. Way you, the longer you stay there, the more it destroys your life. I've, I've lost family. I've nearly lost my children. I've nearly lost myself. And it really isn't worth it. And you go into denial and it's just a horrible, dark place for anyone to be in. Like, no one deserves to be mentally abused, physically abused. Your children don't even deserve it. So, we're talking about the fact that, um, so you've gone from calling Lifeline and having that chat. They've put you in touch with a refuge. So when you went to stay at that refuge, how long could you stay there? How, what were the... Approximately eight weeks. So then you've got eight weeks. So where's all your belongings and everything that you... My belongings are in storage. So you were one of the lucky ones to go and get your belongings, is that... Yes. And that is, you know, I mean, there's not many women that get that opportunity. No. So you were blessed in that way. Um, so your belongings are in storage. You went to another refuge. Then that refuge was about... What did they do in the refuge? Like, You have a caseworker. Mm -hmm. They put you into support systems like, you know, doctor, counselling, psychologist. Yeah. Um, they help you with housing pathways. Um, and they're there just to support you. And I recommend... My biggest problem was I didn't take much support. 
because I was in a lot of pain. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, I had emotional attachment and I suffered PTSD. But the help's there and I, I take it. So they're, they're obviously, I mean, they're willing to help you and guide you yes. and get you assistance and yeah, sure. perhaps, you know, at, at, and find you somewhere to live. Yeah. And, um, okay, so from there, um, so time's catching up and you're there for eight weeks. So how lenient is that time? Like how, is it a definite, like you're there for they eight weeks and that's it? or that they can assess you in that time um, and see where you're at. They can offer like community housing um, and other sources of accommodation. You just assess as it so, comes up. Okay, so they offer you community housing? So at yes, some stage... Yes, can be granted that, yes. Okay, so, I mean, sounds to me like they're incredibly helpful in that regard. Yes. And um, and what about your children with you? Were Was that... Um, were they catered for? And, and yes, and that, they are. Okay, yeah, that's well. that's just beautiful. So um, from then, um, so you're at that stage. You're in the refuge. Time's running out. Yeah. So was that a good thinking time for you that you were you were there in in this surrounding and you had time out? Like, was that a good um, start thinking about life in general and your future and all that sort of thing? Is yeah, it? for sure. So is that a good a good thing? It's for a good you? place, but personally for me, um, I got sort of into a bit of a comfort zone. Um, I guess I was a little bit frightened to look for housing, um, but at the more, longer you stay there, the, the better you grow as a mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And it's just day by day. It's going to take day by day. And, and that's okay. Out there, there is people out there that care and will support you. And it's scary when you first leave, but it's such a relief. And that's the big thing, isn't yeah. it? That's the most wonderful thing of all, isn't it? Yeah. Is that, you know, relief that, that I guess it's, um, you know, like the weight has been lifted. Yeah. So then you can start thinking about other things. And, and, and the sad thing is not only are you affected by it, your children are affected, your family's affected. Um, And I guess too, because you're you are surrounded by other women that are going through the same thing, and um, you know that's about a situation where like do you make friendships, you know, because you've actually got people that are that are in the same predicament or yeah. in similar predicaments, so you're all seeing the same stuff. Friendships aren't a bad idea. It's communal living, so you do have to um, get on with everybody. Yes. Um, but from my personal experience, um, I'd just be more focused on where you want to go with your own life. Mm. And um, you, you can tend to easily help others, but then sort of not help yourself. Mm. So yeah, mm. it's good to have friends in there, but the main thing is to focus on yourself. Yeah, and that's really good advice. Yeah. You know, it's not about being selfish or anything. No. It's just about focusing on where yeah. you're going and stay focused. So... We're at the next stage where time's running out because it's only a certain period of time that you can stay there. And I know they're just so very helpful and mindful that, you know, you are going through what you're going yes. through. So they're certainly willing to um, extend time for yeah. you. Um, so then time's run out. So what happens then? How, what's, what happens in it? What's the next step that the situation? Did they actually... Did that organisation give you um, places to contact or help you with that? Yeah, they, they do do that. That's all in place. So, you know, like if you're in one refuge and your time's up, you may be able to go to another one. Mm -hmm. um, they just don't put you out. They support you even when you have left the place. Um, they put you on to organisations and they come and see you once a week. Um, That's so wonderful, you're never, isn't it? You're never alone. That is so you're wonderful. And... You know, thank you to everyone out there that works in these refuges and, and thank you to all of them that get funding for it and thank you for the people that grant the funding because, you know, they're just such a wonderful, yeah. wonderful organisation. Um, so that brings me to where you're staying now. And, of course, we're not going to mention anything and um, uh, because it does have to, location does have to remain a yeah. secret. 
Um, so then um, you've come to a refuge that I believe was owned by someone, a home that was owned by yes, someone, correct. and they have chosen to give that home to an organisation to help women in need. Yeah. So this is here. You are here because of this particular person. Yeah. So how generous is that? And, you know, I, I guess, you know, in that particular circumstance, this is about looking out there and saying, okay, if you're out there, you're in my audience now, you're watching this, you haven't got any family, you might have a couple of homes and, you, you know, you might be happy within your own life financially. You know, why not consider giving one of your homes a way to help others, like, you know, help women in need like this. You know, it's such a wonderful thing. And if there wasn't that sort of um, beautiful person out there that decided to do that, you know, this home would not be available. And it is a home, trust me. It is absolutely beautiful. When I came in the front door and I walked through here, it was a real home. It had beautiful feel about it. And the pressure isn't there, is it, for you no, guys? No, like, no, no, you know, and you're all living in harmony yeah. and, you know, and everyone's helping each other and, you know, and there's no real, there's no time constraints no. or, you know, it's just doing everything at your yeah. own pace. And, you know, everything's just, everything's just lovely. I've never seen so many Christmas decorations. So, you know, it's just, it's just beautiful. So, um, okay. So where are you like at now in your own personal life? Like where do you think you, you're at now? Are you ready to find somewhere and, and move out and, and start a whole new life? Not quite. I'm still needing that support at the moment. Yes. Um, but in due time, yes. But at the present moment, no. So after the Chrissy break, you yeah. know. So you'll have Christmas here yeah. with everyone else and... And, you know, I'll tell you what, the environment's quite awesome. Like, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't mind being here on Christmas Day, <laughs> let me tell you. So, um, okay, so right now you feel like you're a little focused and, and life's looking up for you. you got yeah. a smile on yeah, your face. Yeah. Yes, yes. You, yeah. you, well, put it this way, you know. Um, I'm safe, my children are safe. Well, that's what I was going to yeah. say. The fact I'm that just working on. Yeah, when you feel yeah. safe, that's yeah. everything, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and I, I think it's so important to have these organisations that... Very important. You know, help women in this situation. And I know there's so many different organisations. very caring, very compassionate. Well, that's so important, isn't it? it? Is. Because when and you're no in this... one's here to judge anyone. Mm. Yeah, that's, I mean... Oh, I just think... Wow. Thank you to... We can't mention any names, but thank you to that beautiful, beautiful person that donated this house to help Tracy and others in this predicament. Like, thank you and thank you. And, you know, each and every night when I do this show, um, you know, I like people to leave a message to others. Yep. So, Tracy, we've got the microphone there and we've got the camera down there. Yep. And I think... You know, let's just say there is someone out there that's in the predicament that you were in and maybe didn't have the strength to change it right now, but they're on the brink of maybe doing something. What message or what is it that you would like to say to this person? Can you just look down there as if you're talking to them and give them a message of hope? There is hope out there to each and every one of us. It may be hard. There are people there, and I just you know, encourage you so much just to find that little bit of strength to leave the situation that you're in. Beautiful. And to know that you will be supported. And, you know, every single week I have all my beautiful viewers out there that support me endlessly, and without you guys, I would not be here. And I thank you so much. So... You know, here's my chance to say thank you to some of them. So, thank you, Bev Swartz. Thank you, Alana. Thank you, Tani Ingham. Thank you, Vicki Taylor. Thanks, Vicki Taylor. Deb Connor. Lyndall Dixon. Thank you so much. And Gorian Berg. Wow, all the way from Europe. Thank you for that. Gabrielle Bailey. Thanks, darling. Barbara Somerville. Barley. Thank you, Barley. Georgina Harry. Robin Elric. 
Maria Santarelli. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, uh, Sylvia Poulton. And thanks, Tricia Hoffitz. And thank you, my darling, beautiful friend in Brisbane, Shireen Lowe. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. You know, there is hope. You can do it. You can find the strength. And no matter what your situation is, please don't give up. Get some help somewhere. You know, like we've mentioned, there's a lifeline. You know, get some help to alleviate the stress in the situation. Gain strength. Get focused. Be happy in yourself and know that you can do it. No matter what, don't give up and know that you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Trust me on that. And I'll see you next week, 7.30 on Wednesday. Thank you. Bye for now.